What's good guys? Welcome to Robot Fight Club. My name is Lucas and in today's video let's take a look at my fairy weight gyro walker. Let's get into it. Alright, so this video has been a long time coming. I've been kind of promising it for a while and I have finally finished my fairy weight gyro walker. Or it's almost finished. It's in a functional condition. So I'm going to go ahead and do a tear down for you guys and show you guys the design. So I've kind of found out I don't really like doing build videos because I like to build sporadically, you know, a few minutes here, a little like half an hour there. So it just doesn't really work out great for me to do a video. So you're probably going to see a lot more breakdowns of robots rather than build videos in the future. And I hope that is fine with you guys. Next off, um, this is my first time building a gyro walker. So if any of you guys have experience and you see things in this design that I can change and make better, please let me know either in the YouTube comments or on my Discord server. So check that out. Link is in the description to my Discord server. So please leave any comments if you have any. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual robot. All right, so let's get into it. This is the robot, and as you can see, it's pretty much done. It's in functional condition. Uh, I still have to paint it and do a few more finishing touches, but pretty much it's all done at this point. So first, let's just go over some external, external features. Um, I'll talk more about this as we take it apart, but up here, obviously, is the weapon bar. The servo, which operates via a gear system, we'll talk more about this, which turns the uh, weapon arm, which is separately mounted from the servo. Um, there's a three-piece body construction, we'll talk more about that. And, yeah, not much to the outside. Here is a banana for scale, so as you can see, it's still pretty small. This is a fairy weight, which is standard 150 grams. However, this is receiving. Um, usually these robots will receive at least a 50% weight bonus, um, but oftentimes they'll receive a 100% a weight bonus. So this thing can weigh up to 300 grams. And at this point, I'm sitting, everything's in here. This thing is ready to go. And I'm sitting at right about, if I can get the scale to turn on. Hold on, I got low battery, boys. There we go. All right, so right now, I'm sitting at about 234 grams, which um, that's nice to know that I can make it down to a 225 gram robot, which is a 50% weight bonus but I still can add a few more things to get it up to closer to 300 grams when I need to. So I am gonna do a little bit of work making a, maybe a bigger weapon and adding more armor, things like that. Um, reinforcing it more just to get the weight up because if it's there, I might as well use it to give myself every advantage. Let's go ahead and take this bad boy apart and I will show you guys basically how I built it and how it works. All right, so first off, let's take a look at the back. We can just take this off. Um, it's attached by four number three machine screws, or number three, number six machine screws, and those go through all three pieces of the body and hold it together on the corners there. So let me go ahead and take these off. And by the way, guys, there's these feet down here that help it turn, so just so you guys can see that. All right, there we go. And as you can see, this is a uh, just a 3D printed piece um, and that's just a rear compartment basically. Um, pretty solid, thick enough to take shots at this weight class, so not too worried about that breaking. I'll add a few more uh, reinforcements to the back. Right now this is printed at 50%, um, which is nice and strong for this weight class. And what that does back here, guys, is this is the ESC. I'm running a YEP. This is my go-to brushless ESC. Um, I've not really used too many other brands, but 
Let me know what you guys think of this kind of, or this brand of ESC, if you used them before, or let me know what kind of ESCs you guys use for your brushless setups. All right, and here is the um, receiver, which is actually goes through, there we go, and I got it out. This is a three channel uh, receiver, and this is paired with this right here. Let's take a look at this really quick. This is the Fly Sky GT3B, and I bought this specifically for the gyro walker. I'll probably use it in other projects, obviously, but um, I thought with the trigger for the throttle and the wheel here for uh, turning the servo, that it'd be a really uh, good control option for the gyro walker. So I bought this specifically for that. I'm gonna unplug that. So this ESC is sits right there and the servo sits up here. So what I'm gonna do now is take out these screws. These screws sit around the weapon bearing or the weapon arm bearing rather. So those are there just to provide uh, extra support immediately around the weapon bearing where it's needed. So I'll just unscrew these. servo so I can take this out. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the gear setup here um, in a second but it's just 3D printed and fits right onto there like that. Anyways off this comes and um, this in the middle here sits the weapon bearing, weapon arm bearing rather and the two batteries. So I'm running two one cell 150 milliamp lipos in series, or series, uh, yeah, series circuit. So they're doubling up the voltage. So I'm essentially running on a two cell. And this is more than enough power for this weight. Um, a little more uh, capacity than I need, but um, these are pretty much the smallest ones I could get my hands on and they're pretty cheap. So. I just got these. These are like, uh, these are Turnigy, I think, uh, batteries, 150 milliamps. They're like two or three bucks each, really cheap. Um, and they're working really well so far. So I'm very happy with the two cell setup I have. And here's the, that is the lead that goes to those. Just two plugs and goes right into the cert, or, uh, ESC, weapon ESC there. All right, so those sit in this channel and this channel, and that kind of keeps space uh, efficient. Uh, that's kind of what I was trying to accomplish with the three-part body setup. Um, let me know if you guys think that was a good idea or how you guys would have tackled the issue because it was actually quite a challenge getting all of this stuff to fit into this package in a way that looked good because, quite frankly, I was very concerned about the way it looked. You want your robot to look cool, you know? Anyways, right here is a larger bolt, or nut, I should say. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Might as well do it for, for the fans, you know. comes the bolt this body part can come off and take a look at this that's just integrated into the 3d print and I used uh, hot glue to secure the servo in further when you're making robots I completely stand by the gorilla hot glue <laughs> it's really great very tough I've never had a failure with it so I would trust it for some pretty strong applications and I do trust it for some pretty strong applications as you can see here, I've had to shorten the leads for the servos to make everything fit a little bit better. But let's get to what I think is a pretty interesting part of the system. And that is this bearing right here. This is indeed a fidget spinner bearing. Um, bought like five of those for this project. So they're working pretty good. I mounted this 
really strongly in order to make sure that the arm doesn't, you know, completely rip off. And I think I managed to do a pretty good job. So anyways, um, over here, as you can see, the bearing can't fit through this hole. The bolt can go through, but the bearing can't back out and come back to come out. So it's sandwiched in between that and this piece right here, which is made out of that same steel that I was using. And that just sits right over top of the bearing in the front. I have the shielded side facing out of the bearing. And just like that. So that sandwiches the bearing between this plate and this steel part right here. But when that stuff is taken off, the bearing pops right out. And... I love fidget spinners from my head to my toes. I even love them spinning right here on my... Just a fidget spinner ball bearing. They're actually super useful for a lot of different projects. So I want to pick yourself some of those up. Anyways, let's get to the weapon arm, which is just bent out of uh, aluminum stock. And uh, I use this for a lot of stuff. Really great uh, material. Forget the exact model number of the motor, but it's a brushless motor. And it has a 2,300 KB rating, which I found is a little too... It's more speed than is ideal, but... I'm working with what I got and it's in all other respects, it's a pretty dang good motor. So um, I'm happy with it and I think I'm just gonna continue using this one. But um, that goes through the aluminum stock um, to attach right there very solidly. I used a 3D printed jig to line these holes up so they would you know, be straight to fit into the motor. And I have a hub made out of just that's just 3D printed PLA. And then I have steel stock, which is the same diameters or dimensions, I should say, as this aluminum stock. And the total weapon weight is 55 grams, which is pretty heavy for a fairy weight, but I would still like to get a little bit more heft into the weapon. So I'm going to be probably making a few other weapon that I can swap out, but this is a pretty good weapon bar so far. Been happy with how it's going. And these are just HDPE weapon uprights. Um, they're flexible. They bend rather than break. And this one is held in by those screws that screw through the motor. And then this one's just held in by a number six machine screw onto the opposite side like that. And this is a larger bolt that I found was able to fit the inside diameter of the bearing. So I got this one and the three leads that go from the motor go through the middle of the bolt. I drilled a hole through that. Um, not too hard. This is just zinc. So it's not like impossible to drill. So I got through there and then mounted right here is the 3d printed uh, counterpart to this gear which holds on the servo. So that allows this part to turn. I try to make everything as simple and as durable as possible. And I think I've succeeded. I'm really happy with how the design has turned out. Um, again, if any of you guys have any ideas at all, even if it sounds dumb, but just let me know. And I would be happy to implement changes that um, would increase the effectiveness of the robot. So if any of you guys have any sorts of suggestions, I would love to hear them. All right, so that's pretty much it. The robot isn't too complicated, but um, it was a great build for me. I was really happy with how it's turned out so far. I actually modeled a lot of the robot up in CAD using Fusion 360, which is a program I was learning as I was building this robot, switching over from FreeCAD, which is what I'd been using before. But um, I modeled a lot of the robot. Uh, all the parts are designed in Fusion, 3D printed parts. And I actually um, assembled a CAD model, which is a first for me. Uh, so I'm happy to take the next step into starting the CAD design. The robot works very well, which um, I'm surprised and happy that it's working so well. 
for the first try. You know, the gyro walker thing can be kind of hit and miss. So I'm glad it's working out. And um, without further ado, let's just send it on over and I'll show you guys some of the test footage. Let's get into that. Self-write it, that's nice. Oh, come on, here you go. Oh, there we go. So it's a little iffy right now, but... Alright, thanks so much for watching guys and make sure to subscribe if you're not already. I'm going to be coming out with more great robotic content which I at least think is interesting and hopefully you guys will too. So make sure to subscribe. Um, I'll answer any questions about the robot or anything else either in the comments or on the Discord server so make sure to check that out. And like I said, I'd love to hear any input you guys have on the design or pretty much anything else, video ideas, anything like that. I'd love to hear it here or at the Discord server. Anyways, that wraps it up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time on Robot Fight Club.